After a thousand days in prison, Canadian hostages have been released by China. And the price paid was high. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Good news! The Chinese Communist Party just scored a major victory against the West. What? I didn't say who it was good news for. For the West, this is crippling. China's hostage diplomacy works. You see, in December 2018, Meng Wanzhou, the CFO of the Chinese telecom company Huawei, was arrested in Canada. She was accused of actual crimes, fraud relating to violating U.S. sanctions on Iran. Meng has now admitted to misleading a global financial institution, which was the basis of the fraud charges. But is she going to jail? No, no. She flew back to China over the weekend, where she got a hero's welcome.我是一直坚信这个就晚都回家迟早都会有这么一天一定会回来他也一定能够回来我也是这么认为但是这一天比我们那个比我因为我们祖国强大了这是毫无疑问的那这一天给我们国庆二零二一年的国庆最大的最大
This was a big reason why the U.S. State Department has been warning Americans not to travel to China, because of arbitrary and wrongful detentions and the use of exit bans on U.S. citizens. How could the West give in to these kinds of demands? More after this final break. Welcome back. In China, the courts are controlled by the Communist Party. Rulings are political, which is why the Communist Party was so confused about Meng Wanzhou. In the West, courts are independent. There's rule of law. You can't just ignore that, and governments can't force courts to make politically motivated rulings. But what you can do is get the U.S. Justice Department to stop prosecuting Meng, which means her case doesn't have to go to court at all. Last week, Meng reached an agreement with the U.S. Justice Department to defer her prosecution until late 2022, after which point her charges would be dropped. So yes, as part of the deal, Meng admitted she misled major banks into violating U.S. sanctions on Iran. But she also won't be charged with fraud, as long as she doesn't violate the deferred prosecution agreement. Or, as the South China Morning Post so eloquently puts it, no crime and no punishment as Meng Wanzhou admits wrongdoing without guilt. The question is, why is this happening now? Meng's extradition case in Canada has been going on for almost three years. A ruling was set for later this year, but Meng still could have appealed the extradition. Although we don't know how the judge would have ruled, the Canadian government was at least publicly not bowing to the Chinese Communist Party's hostage diplomacy. And then the U.S. seemingly let Meng off the hook. According to reports, Meng's lawyers had been talking to the U.S. Justice Department since 2020. But through both the Trump and Biden administrations, prosecutors insisted that Meng admit wrongdoing, which she was not willing to do. Until last month. It's not hard to see why Meng would have changed her mind. Maybe she realized that Canada was actually going to extradite her to the U.S., and this gave her a way out. But why would the U.S. Justice Department cut a deal with Meng? Justice Department officials defended their actions, saying that many similar cases led to little jail time, and that prosecutors felt that Meng's statement gave them 85% of what they would have gotten if she had gone to trial. Of course, there are also questions about whether the Biden administration pressured the Justice Department. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki denied this. In a press briefing, Psaki said that this was an independent legal decision made by the Justice Department. And she said it doesn't mean there's a larger change in the U.S. government's China policy. Sure. But even if what she's saying is true, that's not how the Chinese Communist Party sees it. Remember, they have a hard time with the idea of independent judiciaries. Communist Party mouthpiece, The People's Daily, wrote this was a major victory of the Chinese people. And by victory of the Chinese people, they mean victory for the Chinese Communist Party. One of the top comments on Weibo, China's version of Twitter, said the reason why Meng's return has drawn so much attention is that this is a diplomatic coup for China and a manifestation of China's strength. As CNN says, many called her a national hero and hailed her return as a symbol of China's victory over the West. Chinese state-run media reports were filled with that message. They also erroneously said that Meng had pleaded not guilty and left out the part where she admitted wrongdoing. Also conspicuously absent was any mention of the release of the two Canadians, Kovrig and Spaver. Some social media posts about their fate were also censored in China. But as I said earlier, this is a major victory for the Chinese Communist Party, at least in the short term. What happened with Meng Wanzhou undermines everything the U.S. has been trying to achieve against the Chinese Communist Party. Yes, it's great that the two Canadians were able to return home. It's been horrible for them in China. But it tells the Chinese regime they can just kidnap innocent foreigners to use as leverage against their governments, which means they will keep doing it. And as the New York Times puts it, their release will likely do little to resolve deeper issues, including human rights, a sweeping clampdown in Hong Kong, cyber espionage, China's threats to use force against Taiwan, and fears in Beijing that the United States will never accept China's rise. And speaking of using people as leverage against their governments, 
The Chinese Communist Party also released two American siblings they had stopped from leaving China for three years. Why weren't they allowed to leave China? Because the Chinese regime was using them as leverage to force their dad, who was accused of fraud, to return to China. It's nice to know that no case is too small for the Chinese Communist Party's hostage diplomacy. Just don't go to China if you're American, or Canadian, or Australian, or Lithuanian, or, you know what, just, just don't go to China. There is one bright side to all this. The Chinese regime's hostage diplomacy is out there for the world to see. There is no more plausible deniability, and that's bad for them in the long term. China kidnapping two Canadian citizens has helped lead to almost three-quarters of Canadian society having a negative view of China, which also means there's growing resistance to Huawei's presence in Canada. Canadians are changing. Instead of apologizing for everything, they might start to get loud, angry, and obnoxious. In other words, they might start becoming like Americans. <laughs> yeah. And it's not easy making a show that criticizes the Chinese Communist Party. Loads of demonetization and censorship from YouTube and Google. Not many advertisers are brave enough to work with us. So we rely on support from viewers like you, who want to join us in exposing the Chinese Communist Party to the world by contributing on the crowdfunding website's Patreon or Locals. As a thank you to them, whom I call the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, I answer their questions on the show. Today's question comes from... Doesn't matter on Patreon. I'd like to ask Chris if General Milley's CCP counterpart has issued any remarks about his conversation with him. Ooh, good question. So earlier this month, it was reported that General Mark Milley called his Chinese counterpart, General Li Chung, at least twice. And in one conversation, Milley supposedly told Li that he would alert him in the event of a U.S. attack. That was according to the book Peril by Bob Woodward and Robert Costa. Woodward, by the way, has a history of bending facts to suit his narratives. And it looks like that's what happened here. Woodward was framing the story as General Milley going behind then-President Trump's back because Milley was concerned Trump was erratic and might launch a war with China as a wag-the-dog type distraction, as starting a war to help win an election. However, it turns out, and this is according to Fox News, those calls were not secret. In fact, according to sources that spoke to Axios, the call happened because the Defense Department was concerned China was getting bad intelligence from its sources. One of the sources said, I think the Chinese were getting bad intelligence, a combination of wag-the-dog conspiracy thinking and bad intel from bad sources. Hmm, sounds familiar. Milley is standing behind his communications with China, but his Chinese counterpart, Li Zuocheng, has not really said much. And that's because this was a huge win for the Chinese Communist Party. The CCP loves using internal political divisions in the U.S. against us. Let us devour ourselves over pointless partisan bickering, and the Chinese regime wins. Thanks for your question, and your support doesn't matter, because it really matters. And if you'd like to join us in the fight to expose the Chinese Communist Party to the world, you can help us by liking and sharing this video, or you can join the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army over at patreon.com slash China Uncensored or chinauncensored.locals.com. You get different perks with each, so check them out. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.